<laughs> okay, we are almost ready. Getting there, guys. So close. <laughs> Sorry for the weird pulsating of the, the autofocus. It's trying to figure itself out. Uh -huh. You guys were probably, um, probably hearing... Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, you were probably hearing me type a little bit ago. Let me know if you can hear. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys can hear me and we will get started. I know my, uh, my webcam's a little overexposed, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix it in the morning. Hi guys. Hello. <laughs> can you guys hear me okay? Aw, thanks guys. Thanks for the hair compliments. <laughs> Alright, so just to, I'm gonna, I hope you guys can hear me. Oh, go outside and paint plants from life. That's a good idea. Okay, audio works fine. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. Hi, everybody. Oh, good. I'm so glad you can hear me. Okay, so what I have here today is a palette that was sent to me by a lovely um, subscriber or follower who sent me these Blick Artist watercolors to my P.O. box, which is so sweet. That's so considerate. Um, okay, anyway, I got these um, Blick Artist watercolors. I'm really excited to try them out. So I'm going to be swatching them today. These are the colors that were sent to me. I can't wait to check them out. I've never used this brand of watercolors before. So, um, it's going to be fun. We're going to take a look at them. Talking into a fan, really? Mm, I'm sorry. <gasps> ah, the audio's not great. Sorry, guys. Okay, so some people have good audio and some people don't. All right, let's, let's see what we can do. All right, so this is my... This is my Etcher Labs cold press sketchbook. Audio is strange sounding. Oh, it might be. I hope it's not coming from like um, multiple places. It should just be audio from one place. So let me make sure all the other audio is muted. So we're only getting audio from one place. So it should be better now, hopefully. Okay, yep, all the other audio is muted except for the webcam mic, which is what I want. Okay, all right, so this is my Etcher Labs cold press sketchbook. I'm going to be doing like a, an individual video just for this, so um, that'll be coming soon. And um, I have been doing little bits of stuff in this sketchbook, not a ton yet, just kind of playing with it. So, just been doing some kind of random sketches, and we are going to be, I want it to be a surprise. Anyway, we are going to be painting something today. Uh, thanks for the um, recommendation to refresh the page for better audio. It's good. Oh, good. And it looks like that worked to, um, to fix. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> there's not no audio now. Oh, no. It's good. It's good it's frozen oh it's gonna be kind of all over the place guys hopefully it's not too crazy today oh no okay good refreshed and it's improved okay of course there is a um, there's gonna be a delay you know so I want to swatch these colors. And we're going to swatch them. So I'm not going to swatch them in the order they're in the palette. I want to kind of switch things up and swatch them in a, a little bit of a different order. So, um, okay. Yeah, we will be talking about 
so I technically have two announcements and um, one of them is not ready yet. I was hoping to make both announcements today, but um, that's not going to happen. <laughs> anyway, okay, we're going to start with this lemon yellow. Oh, I'm going to have to uh, mute this computer. It wants to make noises. Okay. Aw, thanks for coming, guys. Okay, so let's start with this lemon yellow. Hopefully you guys can see okay. Um, let me know if you guys have used Blick watercolors before. I have not. This is my first experiment with them. I should probably label these, huh? Oh, hello, everybody. So we're going to swatch these and then we're going to paint with them. I do have a, I have a sketch ready to paint with, so. Yeah, the silver black velvet brushes. I love these brushes. They're fantastic. I totally got distracted from talking about an announcements. I'm slouching pretty hard, guys. I don't know if I, uh, if I said that already but yeah pretty pretty serious slouching going on right now anyway so the first announcement I'll, I'll save the second announcement for the next time we do this but the first announcement is pretty simple and that's that streaming is going to become a regular part of the channel so I want to start streaming for you guys more often um, I don't I haven't completely decided how often I'll be streaming um, at least, at the very, very, very least, once a month, um, and at the very most, once a week. So, we'll have a new video and a new stream every week, potentially. Or streams could happen every other week. Um, I'm not sure. But we'll definitely be streaming more often. That's something that I really want to be able to do for you guys. And, um, yeah. I think that could be really cool to stream more often. I'm also slouching because the sketchbook's really long and I have like the other long half of it is like poking me. Yeah, we're gonna, um, we're gonna be streaming more often. I'm excited. So I'm looking forward to doing that with you. There are lots of youtube -y type things, that's random, um, <laughs> lots of youtube -y things that I want to take more seriously and put more of a focus on, so hopefully we'll be able to work on those things together. I mean, I'm excited. Aw, thanks guys. Is that, what is that? Gooch Canoe asked, is it appropriate to ask for some art mindset advice? Um, at this time, uh, you're more than welcome to ask for advice. If, if people in the comments can comment or if there's anything I can say, I'd be happy to help if I can. And of course, I'm answering questions. Absolutely, if you guys want to ask, answer questions. This is the Etcher Labs cold press sketchbook. Do I have a pen handy? Hold on. Hold on. At, oh, Etcher Labs. Very professional. No text overlays here. It's just um, writing with a pencil. <laughs> I like, this is interesting. The warmer red in this set is an illusory crimson. And that's really pretty, right? I think that's really pretty. I haven't used a ton of illusory crimson, but I'm excited. Hi, guys. Yeah, if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to ask them. Okay, there's a dioxazine purple here too. That's always a fun color. It's, yeah, so purple. Wow. Oh, whenever people um, tell me that my videos inspire them to draw or to paint, 
that like that makes me so happy I'm so honored I'm moving into the blues now for this set brushes for beginners Hmm, it's really that's a that's a really good question. Like brushes I would recommend for beginners. It's that one's a tough one for me because I think that oftentimes like natural hair brushes get more expensive, but if you use synthetic brushes, you're not gonna they just don't hold very much, so it's difficult to um it's difficult to control them sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's hard to know with brushes. Oh my goodness, so many comments. Thank you, guys. Hold on a second. <laughs> my goodness, you guys have so many things to say. Um... I think if you can find, um, it's so hard. Natural hair brushes are great. I really like actually some of the brushes like on AliExpress by like Art Secret. They're like a natural hair brush that I think is pretty easy to control. Those can be really nice to use. If anybody else has any recommendations for good brushes for beginners that aren't super expensive, because I love these um, I just got paint on my hand. I love the silver black velvet brushes, but they are, are they are more expensive. Um, oh, simply si simply Simmons brushes is that the ones? Um, I've heard of those. Yeah, I've heard that those are um, good. Yeah, I've heard good things about those. Simply Simmons. That's a good point. Do I travel with my art supplies sometimes? To be honest, I don't really go anywhere that often, not just because of quarantine, but um, I spend a lot of time at home, <laughs> uh, which, you know, is what it is. That's okay. I'm going to scoot this over here, moving some things around. Ooh, Princeton Elites. I've heard of them. Yeah. So if somebody asked about um, how to capture someone's likeness, and I find that likeness has a lot to do with proportions, so where the eyes are placed and um, where the nose and mouth are placed, as opposed to just trying to draw shapes. Like proportions make a huge difference in trying to capture a likeness. Um, I didn't really think too properly about where how I was gonna swatch these paints. Um, so now I'm like running out of room. Anyway, so sometimes what can be helpful is like drawing over an image of the person you're trying to paint or draw. So like if you have access to like digital drawing, like literally just trace over it and see this is where the eyes go, this is where the nose and ears go. And that can help you to see because you're like, oh man, maybe I've been I've been drawing this nose way too high or I've been drawing the eyes way too small, something like that. That can make a big difference for likeness. Oh, I got a little bit of this. Um, Thalo green in my sap green. Oops. Uh, well, I'm also running out of room because I didn't plan this out properly. We don't have a ton more colors left to swatch. Do 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 do. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, we t and also like I being working from home, it's just so easy to to stay at home. Like my I can see my bed from here, so it's difficult sometimes to like. I want to do more and go out more, but also when you work from home, it's easy to work too much. 
You know, it's easy to just spend so much time working. It's hard to balance. All right, ooh, I love raw sienna. It's like such a pretty color. Raw sienna is fantastic. Okay, I'm trying to see 200, ah, oh, 200 people. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I know what you mean. Like when your eye improves, like when you can see things better, but your like hands haven't caught up yet. You know? Um, I think sometimes you just have to like let your eyes see things. So like try not to push too hard with that idea of um, like I need to be making art right now because I know I can see better. Like just give yourself the time so like I know one one thing that really helps me is to spend time looking at art without drawing anything which sounds a little silly but like sometimes like if I can spend more time looking at art sometimes I'll, I'll do that for like a week even and I won't draw anything and then when I come back to it it just works out better for me you know and I know that not everybody wants to not draw for that long but it, it can be really frustrating and discouraging when you know when you're seeing better but your hands haven't quite caught up yet like just taking a break it's one of the the best things i think you can do um somebody asked about how how i paint loosely and I think, I, don't, I think you have to start with like a, I talked about this in like my how I paint portraits video, but starting with a layer of atmosphere instead of starting with painting a specific part of the face is really important. So if you start with going, I'm going to paint the blush on this face, or I'm going to paint this particular detail, you're already honing in too quickly on details. And that can, that can really like, kind of bind you up in the process right from the get-go like I'm gonna oh this is difficult did I already swatch this or are these just really similar no I don't think I did those look exactly the same like they actually look the same weird okay anyway yeah for loosening up like try not to think about painting a particular feature first just and using a bigger brush helps Oops, I think I... No, I didn't. Okay. Um, this is like a gray color down here. Oh, this is pretty. What's this called? Paint... Oh, it's Payne's Gray. <laughs> of course it's Payne's Gray. This Payne's Gray has like um, some green in it. Or Thalo Blue, maybe? That's very pretty. I like that. That's beautiful. Ooh, similar to White Knight's Raw Sienna. Hmm. Oh, geez. I... I don't know. Um... I can't think of the, the, that individual color right this second. Ooh, Lamp Black! Lamp Black is such a beautiful, like, opaque, dark black. I love it. So, look at it. Ah, look at Lamp Black. So dark. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. The set doesn't have like a super warm red, you know? So it's like, it's a little trippy. Um, here, let me back this up so we can take a look at kind of all of our swatches or as close to all of them as possible. Oh, there's a little bit of the sketch there. So this is pretty much all of them. Uh, the two reds are different here. This is gonna be interesting. There's the reds are pretty both like neither of them is like a super warm red which is like one of my favorite colors to use so that's that's really really interesting this paints gray is beautiful it looks like the paints gray is made up of black and phthalo blue which is what i thought so um 
PBK6, which is actually this lamp black, and Thalo Blue. So those are the two colors used to make this paint gray. Paint's gray, that's really interesting. Um, sometimes paint's gray has a, like an ultramarine that makes it granulate, but this has a Thalo Blue, which gives it a lot more of that greenish tint. Um, Sophie asked if I have any thoughts on the Moleskine watercolor journal. I had a Moleskine, um, oh geez, uh, a couple years ago, and I enjoyed it at the time. It's difficult to say because it's been so long since I've used it. It didn't stand out to me necessarily as this is it, this is the only sketchbook I ever want to use again, and, um, but it was it was good. I I think that I would pick like the Strathmore mixed media, the 500 series. I think I would pick that over a Moleskine just for affordability and size. I prefer larger sketchbooks. So yeah. I think I prefer larger sketchbooks, so it's not my first choice, but it's nice. And if you are able to try things out and just experiment with different stuff, then it's fun. It's fun to do that with. Yeah, it is good. It's still really nice quality. Um, did I learn to draw before I learned to paint? Yes. Um, I actually didn't think that I wanted to do watercolors at first. I, want, I thought maybe markers would be more my thing or, or something that wasn't wet paint because <laughs> that made me nervous. But um, I definitely, I've kind of learned to do both at the same time. Like my drawing has improved vastly since I started using watercolors. So I'm definitely a lot better at drawing, um, but I started there for sure. Uh, do I mix them or use them as is? Definitely mixing, I definitely mix my colors a lot. My favorite brush of all time, currently, I know this isn't really helpful, but this is probably my favorite brush of all time. It's this calligraphy brush. I don't even know what it's made of or what brand it is. I got it in a stationary subscription box. Sorry, my phone's ringing. I got it in the stationary subscription box and um, I love it. It's like a bit soft, but still a little springy. It's a really great size for multi-purpose use. I wish I could tell you what brand it is, or where it's from, or anything like that, but I do not know. <laughs> Sorry guys, I, uh, I love it. I know that's not super helpful. So I have a, I have a sketch here that we are going to um, sketch, paint, we're going to paint the sketch. Um, this is mostly from reference, I had a couple different reference images up to get some, some shapes, and uh, we are going to paint this. I'm excited and nervous. So, okay. Let me, I'm gonna pull up my reference. Also, I haven't really, hi guys. I haven't really uh, mentioned this at all yet, but this is also my first stream with uh, Super Chats enabled. Um, so that's cool and, and potentially exciting. Obviously no pressure to, um, donate. What do you call that? Super chat? I don't, I don't know. Anyway, but it's there. So that's exciting. And I'm excited to do more things like that. Uh, I will be doing streams more often. That's, that's, uh, really exciting. I will definitely be streaming more often. I can't wait to do that more with you guys. So, okay, 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 okay. I'm excited and a little bit nervous to paint this, but it's gonna be fun. Another thing I've been doing, woof. Another thing I'm gonna be doing is t experimenting with painting without um, doing too much to lighten my sketch ahead of time. So I'm going to be uh, leaving my sketch dark, just like it is, and then painting with it just like this. So I am going to quickly bring up my reference image and then we will get started. <laughs> Where are you reference image? I like need to have 
50 things up at once, but I somehow can't have all of them. Okay. Um, I will, starting out, definitely have streams available after they're launched. Or, I mean, after the after we stream. So if you are not able to watch the stream now, or if you can't um, stay for the whole stream now, that's fine. We'll be back. How about for now, we... Here. Almost ready to paint. I promise. Okay. I'm trying to, like, delegate room on the desktop for all of the windows I need to have open. Which is, like, kind of difficult. Any recommendations somebody said for how to get graphite to not smudge? Um, I think one of the biggest things that I try to do is to, um, it's hard to talk and paint at the same time, cover, cover as much of the paper in a wet wash at first as possible. So instead of focusing too much on details right now, I'm just going to be going in with super wet watercolor and just kind of smearing it around because once you can kind of seal that graphite under a layer of water, it's not it's not really going to go anywhere. So that can be really helpful. Um, another question was, how do I choose colors for paintings? Usually what I do is I will start with a primary color, like a main color for the piece. So with this one, I really like that alizarin crimson, and I want to focus on that. So I want to really focus on the reds, and to be honest, using a lot of red is a, kind of a default for me. I love I don't know. I feel like it's just a very emotional color and I like it a lot. So I'm just, oof, got a hair on my brush. I have been leaving hair everywhere lately, like ju just everywhere there's hair. It's crazy. Anyway. <laughs> ah, Gooch Canoe! Steal all your doorknobs! Thank you! My very first super chat. I cannot tell you what that means to me. I'm so honored. Thank you. Thank you so much. The first one in all of history. There will never be a first one. Thank you for the super chat, Gooch Canoe. Steal your doorknobs? I'm not saying that that's guaranteed to happen. Like, I'm not going to say I'm definitely stealing your doorknobs. <laughs> uh, I guess we could consider that to be a possibility, but... No, no, uh, don't, don't quote me on the doorknob theft, please. <laughs> Steal all your doorknobs. That's funny. Okay. So the two colors that I'm using the most right now are the Alizarin Crimson and the Indian Yellow. They, I like what they're doing together, how they're interacting with one another. Hi from Florida. Oh, hello. Hello, everyone. Oh, no, my doorknob. <laughs> yeah, I have, well, my daughter, she's six, and she also has long hair. Her hair's technically longer than mine. And um, she doesn't leave quite as much hair around as I seem to seem to do. But between the two of us, that's all it takes, you know? is two people. Andy, thank you for the super chat. Your videos are so relaxing and nice. Love you. I love you too. Thank you. Yeah, my, between me and my daughter, now I have really curly hair and my hair is really dark. My daughter has pretty straight hair and her hair is light. She's a blonde kid. And uh, between the two of us, there's hair in places. Oh, Arlie, hi, I miss you. Oh my goodness, thank you. Hello from the Philippines. Hello from Texas. You guys, hello. Thank you for being here. What sweet humans you all are. 
Mm, thank you. Yeah, my I, I used to hate my curly hair, actually. I used to not like it. And uh, it wasn't until uh, my husband and I were dating, he kind of got me to like my curly hair. I used to straighten it all the time. Like, I would not leave the bathroom after a shower until my hair was straight. It's a shame to kind of to live that way. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, not... Not what I wanted. Aww. I literally just cried yesterday watching the return video. Oh my gosh. Thank you. That's so sweet. Um, okay, I think I need... I love Thalo Blue lately, you guys. Thalo Blue. Magical color. Thalo Blue with lemon yellow to get like a nice turquoise. What hair pro products do I use for my hair? Okay, just a little bit more on the topic of hair, I guess. Um, yeah, I said I used to hate my curly hair, and I didn't, I used to not like it, and now I do. Uh, I, I use very little products on my hair. I used to be really into hair care and products, but now I try not to care as much. So I use, um, it's mostly just the, I use a cleansing conditioner to wash my hair, and then I just put a little bit of that cleansing conditioner as a, in as a leave-in conditioner after I take a shower, and that's it. So I have a cleansing conditioner, and then I use that as a leave-in after my shower, and then I let it air dry, and that's it. I don't straighten my hair anymore, I don't blow dry it, I just let it air dry on its own, and that seems to work well. I've been trying to take care of my hair and just treat it nice. Thank you guys. Oh my gosh, you guys are so nice. Um, I'm planning to have like a better setup for you guys seeing me in the future because I feel like it's really overexposed. <laughs> so we'll fix it. We'll fix it in the future. I thank you for being patient with me and for for coming to this stream. I am yeah. You guys are so nice. Uh. Today's big announcement, if anybody who was here for the announcement would like to recap for people coming in a little bit later, that would be greatly appreciated. But there's going to be another announcement next time, maybe next week to be honest, because the big announcement for today is that live streams are going to be becoming regular. So I'm going to be uh, live streaming here on YouTube more often. That's the plan. So, um... I'll have another big, that's great, because we'll now have another opportunity, you know, for an announcement. There will be another big announcement coming soon, but it's not quite ready yet, so we'll get there. Okay, I need to do things intentionally here, or I'm just going to start uh, painting nonsense. More streams, more streams. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, my uh, my husband has been helping me to streamline the process for packing orders, which is something that has started to take a lot of time for me. So streamlining the shop process is going to give me a little bit more time for uh, other things with that I want to spend time on, one of which being I want to stream more often. So and hang out with you guys some more. Still got a lot of uh, white area in this and I need to cover some of that out. Let's see, what are, you, what are we asking here? There was a question. Oh, do I find myself getting uncomfortable or tired after drawing for a long time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I do. Aw, Chase, thank you for the super chat. Thank you so much. That's so kind. I really appreciate it. That sticker is adorable. Look at that. Look at that cutie. So good. I saw a, a couple people said hello from Southern California. And uh, hello. I used to live in Southern California before I got married. I was in Indio, which is in the Coachella Valley. Um... 
that's like if you're familiar with the, the area it's where like the Coachella Festival is held Coachella Fest is um, in Indio and I used to live there we used to um, sit out in the backyard and listen to the bands play because it was so loud so yeah hello from SoCal hello well hello to SoCal to those of you from SoCal Yep, these are watercolors. Um, somebody asked how I know where to put colors. And I try to think of color placement as more about um, color temperature than what the actual color is. So instead of going I need this particular shade of brown on this spot. I try to tell myself, I want this to be warmer than this. And breaking things down by color temperature can help me to better establish like relative colors. I need to get some color on the eyeballs here. Oh, you're moving to Southern California, after. oh cool. Yeah, that's where my family lives. So I, I spent uh, lots of years off and on living in Southern California. All right, we need some color on these eyes. And I really like this dusty purple I have mixed up. So even though I'm planning to put in a highlight here, um, I'm gonna cover these up for now just to get a better sense of where everything is at. Okay, that's helpful. Wet on wet, wet on dry, or mix? I would say by default I tend to do more um, wet on dry, but then I like to to kind of charge in other colors while it's wet. So um, once I lay down my paint onto dry paper I will charge color into those wet areas Shamar says any upcoming Skillshare classes is that what you said uh, yeah I'm not sure at the moment I have some YouTube things I want to focus on things have been a little crazy over at Skillshare um, the quarantine has really affected the monetization system over there so which is fine and totally understandable like everybody's going to be affected and impacted in different ways um, but uh, I'm, I'm hoping to focus on some YouTube things for a little while does my palette move yeah this one's pretty wiggly kind of wiggles around a lot for sure Oh, that's interesting about um, Magella's ultramarine light being like one of the most vivid. That's fascinating. Someone asked a question. How did I learn to draw? Um, I mostly learned from watching YouTube videos. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed videos from people like um, Proko, Stan Prokopenko. He does amazing drawing videos and and instructional, educational stuff so I really enjoyed his videos I also watched a ton of Psychra um, when I was learning I found his videos to be crazy helpful for just understanding how the, the drawing mind works you know I need some looser color here I'm kind of missing bits of atmosphere that I kind of that I think I need so I'm gonna try to get like a greenish brown here yeah that little tiny touch of blue is nice if you guys have any other questions just let me know I'm not exactly sure how long I'll be streaming today
Oh, hi, Jim. Thank you. So nice to have you here. Let's see. I need something. I can't believe I haven't touched this. Uh, I haven't even touched this Payne's Gray yet. I have no idea what this is going to turn into or how this is going to look when it's done. Okay, I'm feeling that I'm going to have to switch brushes soon because this one is this one is limiting me a bit. What do we need here? What do we need? Raw sienna. That's what we need. Hmm. Want to make a mess somewhere. So, feeling like I need to make a mess somewhere. Color for the black hole and eyes and the eyelashes. So if you're looking for like the darkest color, I think that an important thing to know is that the color that you use, that darkest color for like your deepest, darkest shadows is going to be relative to what you're painting. So um, it should be something that fits in with the color scheme of the painting that you're working on. So like I usually like I can oftentimes be really happy with a neutralized purple, like something that's super deep but still a little bit leans towards like a purple. Um, I needed this color to spread a bit, so I'm just, just playing around. Videos on paper, hmm. I don't know, what kind of video on paper would you like to see? Like, it's been a long time since I made a video about watercolor paper, that's for sure, you know. No doubt about that. So if somebody asked if I paint with something particular in mind, or do I just have a vague idea? Like for this one in particular, for this one specifically, I just really was inspired by this alizarin crimson. And the reference photo that I'm primarily looking at has some really deep dark redness around the eyes. So I'm kind of just taking um, cues from that sort of idea and playing with it. So no, not, I don't have like super crazy thought out ideas and that's okay. All right, so let's see. How do I keep my yellows from mud muddying up? Well, I... I'm not really the great a great person to ask about that because my yellows get pretty dirty. I'm, I'm definitely not the kind of person who is very good at keeping yellows clean. And sometimes I get yelled at for that, <laughs> for my yellows getting dirty. Oh, the nose is simple and pretty. Thank you. I think that's really important to try to do as much like only communicate as much detail as you need, you know? I think if you get too caught up in too much detail, in specifically in rendering features, it can really easily get to be too much. Oh, I eyeballs, crooked. Like I just made that pupil massive. Okay, it's okay. That's huge. Hmm, I might leave it that way. Um, somebody asked about trying to grow their YouTube channel. Like, what's a good way to, you know, get viewers into your channel? Um, I think consistency is really important. So uploading regularly is really helpful. And then interacting tastefully with the creators you admire. So just commenting on people's videos. Not necessarily saying, hey, hey, come to my channel and check out my videos. Nobody likes that. No, nobody likes that. 
Um, but just being honest and appreciating the content that other people are making can be really nice. Um, yeah, so be consistent and interact with your audience and the audiences of creators that you admire. Yeah, there, I think I want to let this eye get a bit muddier over here on this side. How's quarantine there? Uh, it's been all right. It's a bit stressful, of course, you know. Um, when, when you, like, anyway, so I have two kids. <laughs> Sorry, I got a little distracted there. I have two kids, and my daughter is in kindergarten, and she's now doing school from home. So that takes, you know, work and effort to manage. Um, which takes time away from this sort of work, you know, getting, getting this work done. But, um, I'm happy to, to get to be a part of her schooling. That's really valuable to me. Overall, we are doing all right. You know, we are, my, I feel bad for like my kids because they want to go to the playground and they want to see other kids, you know. It's hard for them, but we're doing okay. Um, everybody's kind of handling it in different ways, but I'm grateful that we can work from home. My husband also works from home, mostly, not always, but he mostly works from home as well. Natasha, thank you for the super sticker. You are so sweet. Aww. That's so kind. Thank you. Um, yeah, we're doing all right here. We are, we are making it through. So right now I'm just trying to focus hone in on my details like or not necessarily details I'm trying to hone in on the areas that are going to have the most like have the darkest areas you know oh yeah okay Jen made a really good point about um, finding creators who have a similar number of subscribers to you to give them a leg up that's huge when I was first getting started and my channel had like 10 15 to like a hundred subscribers there was like this tiny little community of artists and we all kind of had similar numbers of subs and we were just kind of regularly supporting each other and that was really special like just getting to hear from the same people every week and like it was just nice you know talking to the same people about stuff felt really valuable so I completely agree Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. Please don't worry about, you know, sticker, super stickers not being available in your region. I appreciate that very much, though. Tyler asked how I would recommend uh, practicing painting in watercolors for beginners. And I think that if you're just getting started with watercolors and you're maybe not sure how to practice, there are some, like, simple exercises that you could work on, like... Um, like flat washes and um, just things you can do to learn to control the water. So, you know, my brain. So learning to glaze and just like layer, flat layer, flat dry layers over top of one another. Um, I think that that's really valuable as well. Painting, like you know, that the kind of standard painting of like, this is a box on a table, you know, and getting that to look kind of realistic and, and getting those washes in and 
Mm. Oh, thank you for reminding me. Uh, Monica reminded me, greetings from Mexico. Thank you that uh, I'm testing out new watercolors here. <laughs> and I should probably tell you what I think about them. So these are the Blick Artist watercolors that were sent to me from, a, a viewer sent them to me, which was very nice. And uh, so far, I'm enjoying them. They seem to be pretty reliable. And I haven't had any issues working with them at all. So, so far, so good. Um, yeah, I am, I am enjoying them so far. Okay. Oh, Denise, hi. I'm sorry you didn't get notified. Thank you for, for stopping by, though. That's so nice. Um, I love how phthalo blue kind of stains and shows through things. So nice. So nice, yeah. Yeah, Willow kind of mentioned, like, some other people that... I, I'm very happy and fortunate enough to call friends now, including like Denise and Tori and, and Otokano, like just beautiful, amazing people that I think that's one thing that really surprised me. I talk about this sometimes. One thing I wasn't like expecting about being an artist is the, how supportive the community, community is as opposed to people just being competitive, you know, because we could come at, come at it from the perspective of we're all kind of fighting for the same audience, which isn't exactly true. Some people will like um, Denise's videos who don't like my videos, or, um, you know, some people might prefer like Tori's videos. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, things happen, right? And I just think it's amazing that we get to be friends and to support and occasionally work with one another instead of just feeling like we're just competing. And that's so special so special. Okay, I keep, I've been saying for like 20 minutes that I want to switch to a smaller brush. So I'm going to switch, switch to a uh, smaller calligraphy brush here. <laughs> okay. Do I sketch directly onto my watercolor paper or copy and paste? So I sketch on my watercolor paper. If I try to transfer to watercolor paper from a different paper, I never like how the sketch looks. So it took some trial and error to find out how I like to sketch on watercolor paper because, you know, you don't want to do a ton of erasing and that can get a little tricky. But yes, I do. I do sketch directly onto my watercolor paper. Oh, thank you, Denise. I know Tori's streaming on uh, Twitch, which means that she and I probably started streaming around a similar time, which is my fault. That's my bad because Tori has been streaming at this time for a while. So um, I kind of jumped in on her streaming time, which I won't do in the future. I'll try to um, make it so we're not streaming at the same time. Not that it's I'm that big of a deal. Tori obviously is like a superstar. But um, I would I like to watch her streams, so I will try to uh, not overlap with her in the future. Okay, let's. I'm gonna dry this a little bit. I'm gonna use this um, really old heat tool that's kind of melted and falling apart, so it's gonna be a little loud for just a second. Hold on. Hopefully that didn't take too long. Alright, now I need my areas, my darkest areas, and I need those so that I can focus on finishing this up and thinking about what I need, it, need to do to be done. So let's see if it will focus here. Give me a moment to change our focus area. Oh, no, no, no. 
Hmm, it might be a little too close. Oop, sorry guys. You can do it, camera. This might be as close as we can get with this camera. So I hope that that's okay. Yeah, let's try that. That looks okay. Oh, thank you, Jen. I'm, a, I'm glad you're enjoying the, uh, the stream. All right, so let's focus on some darker shadow areas. And I'm going to switch to a smaller brush as well. This is a calligraphy brush. This one is from Blue Heron Arts, and it comes in a three-pack. It's like a three-pack starter set. Um, if you go to, like, blueheronarts.com and look for, like, beginner kits, um, this is one of the, the one of their beginner kits. And this is, like, the smallest de detail brush that comes in that set of three. So... I like it a lot. Hmm. Yeah, I was I've been watching Tori's videos for a long long time. Um especially when she like when she first was like when she said she was ditching her art style and she kind of moved away from doing marker art and was first making a transition towards like slightly more realistic proportions and things and now she's kind of come full circle I feel and is is just doing what makes her happy which I think is beautiful when do you like to paint when it's sunny Ooh, that's an interesting uh question yeah, I was going to do gouache today. I almost did gouache today. So hopefully um, next time we'll do gouache. Because I, I have a gouache project that I uh, want and need to work on soon. So hopefully soon, next time, we'll do gouache. Uh, and that'll be fun. I'm happy to know that you guys would like to see... A gouache video and yes this is somebody asked this is a natural hairbrush yes I can't tell you exactly what kind of fiber it's made out of but it is a natural hair brush do, do, do. the reference image I'm using has very heavy um, like eyelid creases That's fun. Um, somebody asked, who asked? Amia, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, wants to know if there's any medium that I want to try. Oh, you're going to class. Thank you, Jesse. Jesse, thank you, Jesse, for coming. Um, I hope your class goes well. If there's any medium I want to try, I don't know. I'm doing pretty good right now. I keep thinking that I'd like to get back into oils sometime soon, but I'm not... Sorry that my webcam's a little shaky. I'm not pushing for that too hard because the last couple times I've gotten my oil paints out, they mostly just have stressed me out. So... I'm pretty content with what I've been doing lately. Um, I get Somebody asked where I get reference photos from. I get them from a couple different places. It depends on, well, no, it doesn't. I use Pinterest a lot. And then when I'm painting from Pinterest, I do my, my best to use my references interpretively. So I'm not necessarily just trying to copy the reference that I see. I'm trying to interpret um, colors or shapes of features and not just copy what I see because these images don't 
you know, belong to me just because I'm using them. So, but there are also places, websites like Unsplash or Pixel What is that called? Pixel Lovely? Maybe? <laughs> anyway, there are websites where you can get like um, royalty free reference images and um, if you were to copy them or use them more directly, that's okay. <laughs> Depends on where you get them. Yeah, I've been thinking about trying oils out again, but I just, they stress me out. And I don't like mixing my colors ahead of time. I like to mix colors as I paint. And I, I just don't like to have to take the time to do all of the mixing prior. Um, yeah. Pixabay? Yeah, is that it? Thank you. I need like a warmer red. Yeah, French fry was talking about hating. Oh, sorry, I just knocked my camera. I was talking about hating gouache. And the first time I tried gouache, I hated it too. <laughs> but it's just if it's if it's something that you haven't used before and it's new to you like there's zero reason that the first one would go exactly the way you want it to you know it takes time to um to become proficient at a new medium and you have to be willing to give yourself that time Somebody asked um, how I set up cameras for live streaming. So the one camera that I'm using is just the webcam on my husband's laptop. Hopefully, hopefully, I will hopefully be able to upgrade that one soon once I have another camera stand. And the other camera that I'm using is a Logitech webcam that I have mounted to my desk. So you guys are like up above directly above the painting. I feel like getting in those super dark values is like what makes a huge difference. Sorry, I'm also like a, an obsessive hair twirler. I don't know why, but I constantly twirl my hair and I, I really should do that less I mean you guys know if you can relate to just like constantly touching it which I, it's funny because I didn't even realize how often I twirled my hair until I got married and my husband was like why are you, why do you do that all the time not in a rude way or anything of course but uh, he kind of pointed it out to me that I do that a lot. How do I know how much paint to mix up? I think it's definitely part of its practice and also part of it like I, I do oftentimes end up with more um, than I need which is fine because it will dry on the palette and I can just use it for the next thing, you know? So that's not a huge worry. And because I don't mix super precisely when I paint, um, if I need to mix up more and the color is slightly different, it's usually okay, you know? It's usually fine. White Knights or Magello Mission Gold? Ooh, that's tough. So if you weren't talking about the Pure Pigment set, which is the one I reviewed the other day, if you were just talking about like the more common, like more standard Magello set or White Knights, I don't know. Magello has the, um, the, the benefit of being like really 
vibrant colors, but sometimes the pigment mixes can be a little strange. Like the, the pigments that colors are made up of and the naming conventions because it's like a more of an Asian watercolor, the naming conventions can vary from what might be more common. So that can be a little difficult. Um, and then white nights, sometimes you can end up with more opaque colors, which isn't what everybody wants. I love this brush for making little hairs. That's fun. Now we need more of them to balance it out. So we'll figure out where to put some more little hairs. Um, if, it, if I was going to choose, I would probably pick White Nights, but I don't have a ton of, especially like super recent um, experience with Magello. I've been really enjoying the Pure Pigment set lately, but um, yeah, they're both excellent. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Bao Hong is fantastic paper. I'm sorry if I missed that question. I, I really do enjoy the Bao Hong paper. Can I make a draw this in your style? That sounds fun. I haven't done that in a while. I did recently do the like paint with Arlie thing, but that was different. You know, that was like I gave a sketch that people could paint over. I'm sorry that my hand makes it a little difficult to see what I'm doing. Why do I use calligraphy brushes? Um, I like, I, I, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I tend to prefer round brushes, which, you know, is standard for calligraphy brushes. I'm trying to like paint without blocking everything. Um, I, I just, I like that they have like a bit of an organic feel in the hand, like to hold. They hold a lot of water. Um, they are oftentimes made to be kind of springy, so they hold a really nice point in a lot of instances. So there's just a lot to love for me. Oh, Shamar, thank you for the for the uh, super chat. That's so nice. I appreciate that very much. Uh, will I do acrylics again? Yeah, definitely. I'm just trying to kind of uh, flow with things as I am feeling inspired and uh, not force myself into like rules that don't work for me, you know? But yes, I definitely do want to get back to acrylics um, at some point. They're fun. Oh, Alessandra asked if you can tag me. Yeah, if you make a painting from one of my ideas, please, yeah, go ahead and tag me. That's fine. Um, I like seeing other people's interpretations of paintings that I have done. That's always fun, I think. And I would rather be tagged than, um, than not. So, yeah, that's fine. I just don't like it. Like, have you guys noticed sometimes where, like, somebody will make a post on Instagram and tag like 80,000 people or whatever the maximum number of people you can tag is just for what I don't know what the benefit of that is but it happens I don't like being tagged in those kinds of posts um, but yeah I don't mind generally okay will I do more limited palette videos yes um, Next week's video will be a limited palette video, so there's another one coming soon. It's exciting. And I already know um, approximately what colors I want to use for that. So, yes, another limited palette video is coming soon. Yeah, Create with Kristen says I'm re-downloading Dragon Age Inquisition for a new playthrough. Um, I hope you have fun. I love Dragon Age. What a great, um, what a great series. Alright, I think I'm soon ready for some highlights here. Because this is just a sketchbook sketch, so I don't need it to be, like, 
super perfect. For me, I usually time out on a piece because of like the amount of time I've been working on a thing as opposed to um, how detailed it is. Because especially when I'm live streaming, I've noticed that I can just kind of continue to fiddle it with things like indefinitely. Like I could sit here and fiddle with this thing and talk with you guys like forever. But I think it is time for... I think it is time for highlights. So I need to grab my white gouache. So let's back up a little bit. Yeah, it, it hurts my heart to think about Dragon Age 4, to be honest, and how much I want that to be a thing. So, yeah, it hurts me. It hurts me to think about. <laughs> Aww. Thanks. Yeah, a new limited palette video is coming. Trans how would I transfer a drawing to watercolor paper? I tend to not do that very often. I like to sketch directly onto my watercolor paper. When I did transfer, I oftentimes used a light box. Um, yeah. You, um, excuse me, you can also use like graphite paper or transfer paper. That works as well. I feel like we need a little bit more... I know I'm, I'm going to get my gouache. I just need a second. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I currently need a little bit more shadow here. I want to focus, like, draw out this plane of the face a little bit more. So her forehead doesn't look quite so round. We might actually have to give her... A bit more hair coming down this way. I just put that into wet paint. Oh well. Okay. The iron ball, yeah. Yeah, soulless romance. I'm still. I'm permanently damaged. Soulless has permanently damaged me. Let me grab my gouache. Hold up. A video for my sketching process. Um, yeah, I, I can do an updated sketching process video. I have done that in the past. I have, um, yeah, I've talked about my sketching process in the past, but I should do an, an updated one because things always change, you know? Do I prefer a French fry? Wants to know if I prefer tan pan watercolors or tube watercolors. Mm, uh-huh, okay. Sometimes they can be diff more difficult to reactivate. I like... Um, I like tube watercolors because I can put them into a palette of my choice. Um, and oftentimes I end up going with plastic palettes like these. I prefer to get paint out of wells as opposed to um, half pans. So I prefer wells over half pans, which means I guess tubes. Um, because I use calligraphy brushes that are larger, sometimes half pans just feel too small, you know, for getting paint out of. Okay, we're gonna do some highlights real quick. So let me bring you guys in close again. I know I just moved you out and now we're coming back in. Okay. All right, let's see. Let's see, I want to emphasize the, the section of the eyelid here. Give that a little bit more form. Balancing water with white gouache is so difficult because if you add too much water, your color dims away so fast. Can we send you art and stuff? Yeah, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, Robin, I have a PO box. Um, I will, after the stream, I will add my P.O. Box address to the description of this video, but it's also in the description of all of my videos, my P.O. Box. Um, I don't talk about it a ton, but it's there. If you wanted to send me something, thank you for asking. That's so sweet. Um, Um, somebody asked if I prefer water mixable oils over normal oils, and water mixable oils are the only kind I have used, so 
I, uh, I haven't used regular oils before. Do, do, do. These white, the white fades out so fast, but it's fun. I like this part. Um, so somebody asked if I painted when I was younger. I have n the the only watercolor painting I've done. I've basically done on this YouTube channel. So um, I drew a lot as a kid and as a teenager, but I didn't paint. I've only started painting in the last four years or so. So there are a lot of people who have been painting way longer than me. Um, my, my experience with watercolors is a relatively new thing. Oh my goodness, thank you, Ken. Thank you, everybody who says that they feel inspired. That's, that's the goal right there. That is the goal. Yet we are just about done here. Just about done. I have to be careful not to overdo the white. You know, it's hard. I haven't made a sketchbook in a long time. Somebody asked if I still make my own sketchbooks. It has been a while. Even though I got paper specifically to make sketchbooks with, I, um, I haven't done it in a little while. I'd love to get back into that soon. So hopefully soon. Yeah. I think we're just about done. Oh no, your paper is expired? Yeah, I know that watercolor paper can definitely get old, you know, and then it just doesn't work as well. Oh, I started the day with a Yoongi live stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Okay, that's super sweet. What were you talking about? Somebody, what was happening? Aw, yay for mom's painting. That's so great. Yeah, I'm able to do what I'm doing because my husband is watching the kids right now. He's amazing. I love that guy. All right, I think we're just about done. So please do, if you have any more questions, now's the time to ask. I know there's a delay, so I won't actually see your questions for like a minute. But, um, yeah, this, the paper can go, it can get old and the sizing just doesn't work the same anymore. It's a shame. Anyway, let's back up. Sorry, this is kind of creaky when I move stuff around. Ooh, and look at that color go somewhere. Where does all the color go? Come back, color. One day I'll actually use my studio lights again. <laughs> Anyway, just a simple portrait today. Thank you guys so much for joining me and hanging out with me. See, yeah, I guess you guys can see the webcam there. <laughs> this is it. This is the webcam that I'm using to, to film. A video of the process when I make a sketchbook. We will see. If I, have, if I find a process that I like, um, you know, that's something that I think that would be a fun new thing to share, I will definitely do that. Practicing and improving drawing people. I would say one tip is just to give yourself time to observe. Like sometimes when I'm getting ready to draw portraits, I spend time just looking at faces. Like I'm not necessarily drawing or picking up my pencil or anything. I'm just looking at faces. And that really helps to kind of wake your brain up um, and just spend more time um, and just, just to think more about facial structures and things that different types of faces have in common and ways that they are different. I find that to be really helpful to start. Uh, no, this is not the camera that I normally do um, filming with. This is a webcam. <laughs> so it would be, uh, I would need extra equipment to live stream from my usual camera. Um, a tutorial on how I paint skin. I have some videos about how I paint portraits and um, 
rainbow skin type stuff. I actually have a Skillshare class on my quote unquote rainbow skin. Um, yeah. Yeah, there I have also at like old, like, I have an old video about how I paint skin. That one's old. <laughs> the process is kind of similar, but that one's super old. Like it's from several years ago. So if you want to see how much my art has changed. Oh, P um, people asked if you missed a special announcement. It was that from now on streams are going to be more usual, more normal. So I'm going to be streaming a lot more often. I know I've just kind of done impromptu streams up until now, but um, we're going to start streaming more often. So that's exciting. There will be another announcement, uh, but it's not ready yet. So once the, um, wow, my hair, I took a shower this morning. My hair wasn't dry when I started the stream. It's slowly drying and just get getting huger, huger, bigger. Um, rainbow skin is just what I call how I paint skin because I use lots of different colors. It's not a revolutionary thing. Artists have been doing it forever, um, using lots of colors to paint skin. Um, I just also do it. Oh, thank you, Denise. Yep, I do have over a dozen classes on Skillshare. If you want to learn, uh, there's several classes on watercolor portraits and um, yeah. I will do my best to make sure that this stream gets saved. What is happening to my hair? It's getting larger. It's growing, increasing in mass. Anyway, okay. I think we are just about done. Uh, the camera that I use to film my videos is the Panasonic Lumix G85, I believe. Um, it's a great DSLR. It, I'm able to film in 4K with it. I'm actually thinking about upgrading so I can film in 4K at a higher frame rate so that I can slow footage down, which I miss doing. So. Yep, we're going to be doing more streams. There will be more announcements and things. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for everybody who um, left a super chat. That is very sweet. Um, yeah, my hair is turning into an, um, an ambiguous monster. It's just growing. Uh, I hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend. Let me know if Fridays are a good day for streaming. Um, I, I'm so overexposed. Oh my goodness, I'm so overexposed. Anyway. <laughs> I will talk to you guys later. I will save the stream if you missed it. Yes, Aiden, you can pay with PayPal in my shop. Um, that is an option. Okay, I hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'm gonna go. Otherwise, I'll just sit here watching the chat and listening to you guys. Goodbye to everyone. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. And I will talk to you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>